Alrighty, everybody. Hey, hey, hey. We are in the 14th week of the season. I know, that's that's pretty crazy. This is the week of the Super Bowl. So, you know, college basketball, you know, is going to take, you know, not so much of a back seat, but, you know, during Super Bowl weekend, it looks kind of light, you know. It looks kind of light, but don't, don't get it twisted. A lot of people said that this Saturday and last Saturday were packed with the games. I personally think that this is going to be even, you know, even better, you know, with the, with the way. Well, I mean, a lot of people said that this Saturday. I keep forgetting. I keep forgetting. Not not last Saturday. I mean, last Saturday was the Big 12 SEC Challenge, and this Saturday was indeed as crazy as I could have expected. Uh, there's still a game. There's still some games going on right now, including the number six Houston Cougars leading at halftime against Cincinnati right now as I'm recording this video. I'm not sure if they're going to win or not by the time we get through it, but Houston was leading by more than 20 points at one point, so I mean, I expect, you know, Houston to take care of business there. We got a lot to go over. What happened in the 13th week of the season was a lot. Um, West Virginia is a team that's in a free fall. I don't think they're going to the tournament at all. Like, Again, this is a Baylor team, you know, that's been injured the hell back. And Baylor did beat West Virginia, but they got smoked by Kansas. They got smoked. They got they got they really got smoked by Kansas. I mean, this was this was this was bad. This was bad, man. Like my goodness, I don't think I don't think I've seen a beating this bad from Baylor. And I get it. Baylor's been injured. I mean, they, they, there's been so many injuries. Like a kid, Joe's been injured. Cryer's been injured. I mean, everybody's just been injured, but, I mean, Kansas didn't have to do that like that. They didn't have to whip Baylor like that. My goodness. I mean, that, my God, you want to talk about that was a beating. That was definitely a beating right there. Um, the big One of the big games, uh, obviously, Texas, Texas Tech. It was nuts. Uh, we had security men coming to the arena, accompanying the horns. A packed house of rabid Red Raider fans ready to see... Texas Tech absolutely suffocate the horns. I, I mean, I, I don't understand at times, you know, with Texas. I mean, Bryson Williams and Kevin Obenar made this team look legit, you know, made this Texas team look like little kids out there. Because, I mean, again, Texas Tech was all over the horns all night. So many, so many of the same mistakes that have been plaguing the Longhorns all season long, and yeah, that happened again. An another, another beating. You know, another beating by by the Red Raiders. You know, they, they, they put up the, they put up the points they needed to, and then Texas Tech followed it up on Saturday by beating West Virginia. So again, you know, this, this all comes it all comes together because West Virginia is in a free fall. Baylor's been kind of injured. Kansas, and we'll we'll tie in Kansas to this too. You know, because they whip Baylor. They also. They also didn't have Ochai Abaji on Monday against Iowa State. But, I mean, the Jayhawks did take care of the Cyclones. But then the Cyclones, they followed that up with an uninspired performance against Texas. Against Andrew Jones, of all guys, you know. Again, this is a Texas team that just hasn't been there all year. And the way Kansas, you know, without Abaji in there, you know, they, they, really took, they really took care of business against Iowa State. And Iowa State has lost seven games in conference play now. Like, uh, I, I, like this was a team that I think a lot of people had eyes on, you know, like back in January, and now, you know, February is here, and Iowa State's on also a big free fall. They should still make the tournament, though, but I just think, you know, it, it's kind of depressing to see the Cyclones with the talent they have, you know, in, in uh, Brockington and Gungham, you know, I mean, the no, Kalisher, my bad. Not kind of game. I meant Kalisher. Uh, Rockington and Kalisher, my bad. You know, with the way, with the way this Iowa State team has been, you know, you, you don't expect this type of thing. Again, the Big 12 is a top-heavy conference. We know that. A lot of people are going to try and discredit the SEC, but, I mean, there there is a reason for that because, I mean, the SEC has bottom-of-the-barrel teams in it. You know, half the, only half the conference is going to make the tournament, I believe. In my opinion, somehow we're going to get half the SEC in. And, like, I, I say this, like, every year that I just don't think the SEC is that good. I personally just don't think that. You know, I think it's Kentucky and 13 scrubs every year. But at least this year it looks very much different. Um, 
So we'll, we'll talk we'll talk about the SEC here right now. You know, LSU, like, they're going to drop out the top 25 for sure. They lost to Ole Miss and to Vanderbilt this week. Just absolutely uninspiring performance right there. You don't you do not do that. You just don't do that if you want to say you're somebody that could be like, hey, we're, we're, we're an elite team. Um so it just it just didn't it just didn't work out. Like Auburn almost lost to Georgia, but I mean that there was a lucky, very lucky layup at the end of the game that worked out for him. It worked out for him. Like Alabama's of a seesaw. Like I don't know what Alabama team we're getting each and every week. Like, unfortunately for uh, the Crimson Tide, they lost to Kentucky. Yeah, they, they they they. I mean, it just is what it is. Like it just is what it is. Uh, but the re- the other big star on the show, aside from the Big 12, of course, is the Big Big East and Big 10. We'll talk about the Big East first because Creighton beat UConn, Isaiah Whaley, Ryan Hawkins. They had a big show, you know. They, they had a duel. They had a duel out there because Creighton, you know, Creighton's a team that was ranked at one point, then they have been bounced out of the rankings since then, and you know they they've been consistently like a top. 40, 50 team, and they're 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 a good team. We we we've gone over this. We've gone over this. UConn, you know, unfortunately, it is what it is. Like, it, it just it just it just wasn't working out for them. They like, in the end, Creighton got the W, and then Marquette swept Villanova, which is like astonishing to me because Villanova had multiple guys put up ten points, but they did not shoot well from the field, you know. Did, Villanova did bounce back against UConn, though, because they controlled that entire game against UConn. Like, they were shooting nearly 60% from the field. So, a big contrast for Villanova there. And, of course, you know, Providence is leading the Big East, right? Yeah. Providence. That Providence. Well, there is a big showdown, you know, coming up soon between Providence and Villanova. And that's going to be real intriguing there. Because, I mean, again, Providence... Providence is a damn good team. They they should they should be a higher seeded team, but I get it. They do have those two losses, and I forgot both of those losses. By the way, um, I'll have to look those up again later. Um, so yeah, the Big East Big East is really really fun. You you can't expect things to be like this is Villanova's conference anymore. This is this is not this is not that at all. Like DePaul beat Xavier. That that's that's how weird it's been for the Big East this year. Okay, that's how weird it's been. And then the other star player, the third star player this year, you know, last year we were, I swear I was talking about the Big 12 and the, SEC, and, and the Big 10 every week. This year we added the Big East to it, so, you know, that, that's how crazy this year has been. Um, you know, the Big 10, crazy stuff as usual. Malik Hall, the big star of the show in the Michigan State-Maryland game in which Michigan State hung on. However, they got blown out by Rutgers. Yeah, the Spartans got blown out by Rutgers on Saturday. And again, Rutgers is a tough place to play, you know. Not a not a gibby by any means. Not a gibby at all. And, you know, it was crazy for, for that to happen. I was completely sitting there shocked when I saw the score because I had turned, I turned everything off at about 3.30ish. Like, Baylor was getting whipped so bad, I was like, I'm done for the day. I'm going to do something else. Uh... And, I mean, I was just completely surprised at that result right there. I was very surprised. Like, man, that's crazy. It's really crazy. Um, the winter storm did come. It came and it passed. Landed, impacted the Iowa-Ohio State game that I wanted to see. But it's okay. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, but, but Illinois, Illinois is this team in the Big Ten right now. They control a top-heavy Big Ten. We're talking; it is jam-packed at the top uh, for the time being, at least. You know, the Big Ten regular season title is always a title that's going to be, you know, very prestigious. Again, you know, again, we know that there's going to be a lot of Big Ten teams in the tournament. We just we just don't know who's going to win the, the tournaments yet. We don't know who's going to win the regular season title or the conference tournament just yet. Like, Kofi Coburn, he, he finally recovered from that concussion that he had, and he put up 37 on Wisconsin. With, I mean, we're talking Wisconsin didn't know what to do. And then Illinois took first place back. You know, they, they got Trent Frazier out here doing things as well. He's been he's been really been a big help, you know, as well, you know, for for the Illini, and they whipped Indiana on Saturday. They, they whipped them. They pretty much... Like, it was close early on, but, it, but it, you know, Illinois pulled away. They pulled away late. So, 
yeah. In the Pac-12, in the Pac-12, let's talk about the Pac-12 real quick, because Arizona, they were finally able to overcome UCLA. Only nine, or rather, about two weeks ago, not nine days ago, like two weeks ago, about a week and a half, two weeks ago, whatever. Arizona couldn't even do anything against UCLA. But UCLA, this time, you know, they got they got beat. They simply just got beat by Arizona. And then, you know, like, like UCLA didn't shoot very well from, from three-point range, and Arizona had 30 foul shots in this game. They had 30 of them. And that wasn't the only thing, you know, that happened to UCLA this week that lost to Arizona because they lost to Arizona State in three overtimes as well while Arizona was able to take care of USC. But, you know, top two teams in the Pac-12, you know, right now it's just like, whoa, what is going on here? Because, I mean, you know, I don't, I don't think these losses will impact UCLA that much. You know, the Arizona State loss is kind of bad. But in hindsight, you know, the Pac-12 is going to have a lot of teams in the tournament anyway. And, you know, you, you know, you know how perception changes when it comes to the tournament, you know, because people seemingly don't pay attention. The Pac-12 is, is, a, is a conference that is definitely a good conference. You know, I just don't. I just don't see, you know, a lot coming from it. Again, USC was playing pretty well against Arizona. You know, I watched a good chunk of that game. And, you know, I, th I think you I think USC has what it takes. I think USC has what it takes. I just don't think they can be able to catch up to Arizona or UCLA at this moment, though. And hopefully we get an Arizona U UCLA 3. You know, we get that in the conference tournament, you know. Because, I mean, I think that would be very nice. Um... Uh, so there's one more thing here that I think I have to go. Well, actually, there's two things. So one is Coach K's final game at North Carolina. You know, first place of the ACC is on the line, but that didn't matter because AJ Griffin, Paulo Banchero, I mean the whole the whole crew for the Blue Devils was whipping up on the Tar Heels. They 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 destroyed North Carolina so bad. It's it's absolutely terrible. It was terrible. What what a bad way to go. I mean, this is crazy. So, I mean, you North Carolina is in some trouble. We'll, so we'll talk about that more, you know, right now, actually, as we get to this week, because, you know, we've got to get to talk about these week's games for the 14th week of the season. And Monday, check it. Let's see what Kansas and Texas can do. I know, I know, I know, I know. It's hard. It's hard to really talk about, you know, Texas every week. On, on this on this damn channel, but I mean you have to. I mean, there's really not a lot you can say on Monday, at least that's looking kind of interesting. I mean, again, you know Arizona, Arizona State. If you want to look at that, but I mean, again, this is again this is a Pac-12 that you know is kind of top heavy. You know, and the Big 12 can produce a surprise each and every game night. I mean. So Kansas, Texas on Monday, and then Baylor, Texas on Saturday. I want to see how Baylor can bounce back, you know, because, I mean, I think I think Baylor needs to be able to bounce back, and I think, you know, Texas is a opponent that, you know, either you get, you, you get a good Texas team or you get a bad one, and it depends on, you know, what kind of game, you know, Baylor can put up against them. I want to see this Baylor team recover, because they also have Kansas State this week as well, you know. There's also Oklahoma, Kansas on Saturday. Oklahoma's also in a free fall of their own, in which I don't think they're doing very well right now either. Uh, so you know, there's that. Uh, Marquette, UConn on Tuesday. Michigan State, Wisconsin, and Illinois, Purdue are the big ones on Tuesday. And then Friday you have UConn, Xavier. Uh, that's going to be really intriguing there. But Saturday, Saturday is kind of interesting in, in a different sort of way. I think, you know, again, I already talked. I already talked about Baylor and Kansas taking on, you know, Oklahoma, and Texas, you know, respectively. But there's also Seton Hall, Villanova, Auburn, Texas A&M early in the morning. I mean, again, Texas A&M is no slouch. Uh, they were at one point like undefeated in the SEC, but now they're not. So, um, and Auburn's, you know, trying to recover from, you know, some close, close games. Again, Missouri and Georgia, I mean, those are the types of games you don't want to have as the number one team in the country. So, you know, it is what it is. And again, it's any given day when it comes to college basketball. Any given day, you know. Mid the middle of the day is going to be really intriguing, I think, on Saturday. You know, you have Memphis and Houston. Now, the problem with Memphis is, you know, 
this team probably isn't going anywhere unless they win the AAC tournament. Plus, Imani Bates is probably gone. Uh, he, he probably is uh, at this point. Like, there's been so much, you know, surrounding Penny Hardaway and crew. I just don't see, you know, a lot. And Houston, by the way, they'll be taking on SMU on Wednesday as well. So that's going to be intriguing there because, again, SMU is one of those teams that hasn't been put in yet by the bracketologists and stuff like that. They, they think the bracketologists are kind of hesitant to put a second AAC team in because there's really it's really only Houston at this point. It's kind of sad that the rest of the AAC ain't picking up the slack. So that's going to be intriguing. Indiana, Michigan State, want to see Michigan State bounce back. You know, again, they already have Wisconsin you know, the second round against Wisconsin this week. But I want to see, you know, Indiana. Indiana's not a slouch tip team either. They, Indiana can play. They can play ball. We know they got guys that can play ball. And then you, if you want to tune in very late, you got UCLA, USC, and then Gonzaga, St. Mary's. I know I haven't really talked about Gonzaga much here. But, again, the same amount of – I don't want to touch on something here real quick. Gonzaga and Duke, you know, the whole Gonzaga-Duke-Auburn comparison that people have been, you know, coming at, you know, on Twitter and stuff like that with, Gonzaga and Duke pretty much have the same amount of quad one opportunities. We're talking about the net here. Quad one opportunities just have the pretty much the same amount. I believe there's a little like 10 games for each of them. So, you know, it is what it is, man. Like, like you, you can say Gonzaga's schedule's not good, but you have to say also that the ACC is not good. Like, I just don't... I really only see one ACC team, and that's Duke coming out of the coming out of the ACC and getting into the tournament, unless, you know, the conference tournament turns out crazy, which, of course it will. Of course it will. It's, it's, it's conference tournaments. They always produce crazy results that you don't expect, you know, because we're a month away from those, so... You know, or less than three weeks, actually. We're less than three weeks away from those. So, you know, that is going to be intriguing there. Like, you know, I get the Gonzaga-Auburn-Auburn Auburn, um, arguments of, you know, who's number one? It's Auburn. That's very simple. Like, why do we have to debate this? There's no there's no debate here. We know who's number one. We know. We know who's number one. Okay? We know. Um, speaking of, there's also... You know, again, we're talking about the Marquette UConn game here. RJ Cole, he's another dangerous player for UConn. So Marquette and Shaka, they gotta watch out. They gotta watch out. Again, like I said, A and M is no pushover. Auburn's gonna need more than what they had against um, Georgia and Missouri. They're gonna need more than what they've had. They also play Arkansas. Auburn does. So you know, that's gonna be intriguing. Chet Holmgren, he's been a terror on the inside. You know, again. Gonzaga doesn't have a lot of quad one opportunities left, neither does Duke. So, you know, Chet Holmgren has really been coming into his own, you know, lately. You know, the skinny, the skinny big guy. He's been coming into his own, and he's been dominating like Gonzaga has been doing for the past month or so in the West Coast Conference. Now, again, West Coast Conference is not a weak conference. We've established this on this channel. We've established the West Coast Conference might get four teams in. However, I think we might only see like three in the tournament, and that's because of BYU. BYU, they have a win against Oregon, but they lost against uh, Santa Clara, and they didn't look too good against Gonzaga. So, you know, like, again, there's a, there's a bad loss for BYU in there. North Carolina, on the other hand, they have no quality wins, so I don't even know why we're putting them in the discussion. Put this team in the NIT. They do not deserve to go anywhere this year. And watch out for those bottom beaters in, the, in these respective conferences. DePaul, Northwestern, you know, teams like that, they're not, they are no pushovers. Like, Illinois is going to have some tough trouble, you know, against Northwestern on Sunday. And then I forgot who DePaul is playing. I think they're playing, yeah, I think they're playing Providence this week. They are playing Providence this week. Yeah, they're playing Providence on Saturday. Got to watch out again. And then for the mid-majors, Murray State is probably going to be jumping into the top 25, as they should. They are 11-0 right now in the OBC. And this Murray State Moorhead State game is going to be a good one if you catch it, you know, during the midday when you're not if you're not going to watch Memphis Houston or Indiana Michigan State, watch this game, watch this one because this is going to be interesting. You know, Murray State and Moorhead State already had met a week ago. They met on the 29th of January. They're meeting again, and this is going to be for first place in the OVC. 
both these teams are very good teams, and we know Belmont is lurking in the background too. And if you're bored on Super Bowl Sunday, take a look at Boise State, Colorado State. Yeah, Boise State got their win streak snapped, but Mount West has been crazy. Mount West is going to get some teams to the tournament. We know this. We, we know this for damn sure. So there we go. So that's going to do it here. Um, we'll be back later in the week. We're talking like Thursday when it comes to the National Lacrosse League. And then we'll have our Super Bowl preview. And then we'll come back, you know, on Sunday to wrap up the Super Bowl and wrap up Week 14 and talk about Week 15 in college basketball. So I'm excited for this week. Uh, well, later in the week, more, we're talking more towards the weekend. So I'll see you all later in the week. And y'all take care, have a good night, and I'll see you soon. Big Boy Sports signing out. Be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and click the notification bell as well so you can see more content. Thank you to number 161 as well.